The leaders from ASEAN member states have converged in Washington this week for the first ASEAN-U.S. summit taking place at the White House. They dined with U.S. President Joe Biden Thursday evening ahead of a full day of meetings at the U.S. State Department today, Friday. Joining us now with more details is VOA's correspondent Jessica Stone, and she's live from the U.S. at the White House. Hello, Jessica. Jessica, can you please tell us more regarding the highlights from the summit so far, Jessica? Well, on Thursday, uh, there were meetings, of course, at the Capitol Hill, as well as uh, the meetings that you featured there at the U.S. ASEAN Business Council at the Commerce Department. Washington has announced $150 million in initiatives to the region. They include climate change-related issues, green energy, the digital econ economy, and working together more closely on a COVID-19 response. One of the more interesting developments that was announced is this first U.S. Coast Guard training team that will be sent to Southeast Asia to work side by side with ASEAN Coast Guards. And of course, that's something that Jakarta has very much championed as an idea that the Coast Guard throughout the region should work more closely together on maritime situational and security awareness, on natural resource protection, on fishing rights, uh, and on freedom of navigation, navigation rather. The Commerce Department also announced that there's going to be a it's huge U.S. trading mission to uh, the region. It'll be held in Thailand next year in 2023, and a number of other trade missions and health missions at the end of this year. And then the other major, uh, quite interesting initiative is this leadership training program that Johns Hopkins and its International Relations School, which is a prominent international relations university here in Washington, they are going to be inviting three young leaders from each ASEAN nation each year for a leadership development program. All right, Jessica, since it's still early in the morning in the U.S., what are we expecting throughout the day today on Friday, U.S.? Well, today is going to center primarily around the U.S. State Department. Uh, meetings are set to begin in just about an hour's time with Antony Blinken and a number of the ASEAN leaders one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, they'll also get a chance to meet one-on-one uh, -on -one with U.S. President Joe Biden throughout the day. Uh, and all of the meetings in which there is a group present will feature an empty chair. That empty chair could have been and would have been and perhaps should have been occupied by Myanmar civilian duly elected leader. But of course, we know what happened in 2021 with that uh, military coup, the junta now ruling, and ASEAN did not invite the Myanmar junta leaders to this summit. And U.S. and ASEAN leaders have both agreed that this would be a form of protest to highlight the problem that is going on in Myanmar with respect to human rights and civil society, uh, and that each meeting would have that empty chair uh, the Biden administration uh, will be uh, ending today with a plenary session, and the U.S. and ASEAN will agree on a visionary statement to set forward the relationship going from here. Now, regarding that empty chair for Myanmar, Jessica, how is Washington navigating the uh, human rights and anti-democratic issues in Myanmar during the summit? Well, it's a key point of discussion for all of the leaders with uh, American leaders. And American leaders have pointed out that they want to support ASEAN's effort to come up with a pathway to uh, a more democratically uh, governed nation. They have uh, already started offering and talking with Myanmar through intermediaries to have that type of uh, setup in Myanmar. Um, but on the other hand, the U.S. is still meeting with uh, the opposition party. There was a meeting yesterday with Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman and the opposition leaders of, of Myanmar's government. Uh, there are plenty of tweets out there about that. Uh, but the White House still coming under criticism, as we talked about uh, previously, from human rights groups, specifically Human Rights Watch, uh, to even have this summit at all in Washington to create an opportunity for that lasting image that we saw coming out of yesterday evening's meal and family photo where U.S. President Joe Biden is side by side with leaders, some of whom in particular Cambodia's leader Hun Sen are recognized as human rights abusers. White House officials have pushed back on that. They say they can make these arguments in private as well as in public and they plan to do so. Uh, but certainly uh, a tightrope to walk for the Biden administration.
Now moving on to the business side, as we broadcast earlier, uh, Indonesian President Widodo invited U.S. companies to invest in Indonesia, uh, specifying Indonesia's large business potential and its rich natural resources. So are we expecting, uh, Jessica, any major economic engagement announcements uh, at this summit? Not at this summit, because the Washington is basically saving that for U.S. President Joe Biden's trip to the region. As you know, he'll be going to South Korea next week, followed by Japan, in which he'll be meeting uh, both of those new leaders, as well as a meeting of the Quad, India, Australia, Japan, and the United States. That is where we anticipate he will make a speech announcing the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, which is America's answer to the regional free trade agreements, uh, such as RCEP, the largest free trade agreement in the world, which is led by China, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, CPTPP, which of course is the successor to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. China's asking to join. The U.S. Uh, under Donald Trump said it would remove itself from that uh, agreement. And so there are many analysts here in Washington who really say, you know, the IFEP is kind of weak tea, as they describe it. It does not have market access for its members. Uh, it does not have a clear roadmap on digital uh, engagement that we've seen as of yet. Nonetheless, this is um, something that the uh, Americans believe will uh, give them a chance to shape and work alongside uh, ASEAN nations with respect to economic engagement, something the region has definitely been looking for. All right. Thank you, uh, Jessica. VOA's correspondent Jessica Stone reporting live from the White House.